We are in a sermon series called Escape Room. Everybody shout it out. Escape Room. Last week we talked about the game master. And how many people enjoy the sermon? The game master. Okay, praise God. Well, if you have been to an escape room, just raise your hand. If you have ever been to an escape room, maybe somebody after last week's sermon went to an escape room. If you're online and you're watching for the first time, type in the chat if you have ever been to an escape room, okay? Because when you go to an escape room, what you'll find out is you'll have somebody who tells you a story. When you go into the room, you'll have somebody, a Nora, that says something like, something like this. Welcome to the escape room. Well, while you are here, we have a lost ship somewhere on the sea. When you are here, you have to find the ship because there is a captain on the ship. If you save the captain and you save the ship, you will escape the room. And then you go out to try to, try to find this captain, finding the ship to try to escape the room. How many people have been there? <laughs> Well, uh, when, you, when you are in the escape room, the person that normally tells you the story is called the storyteller. The storyteller. The storyteller is interesting because he will give you just a little bit of information for what you need to do. But the thing is, there are so many twists and turns within the escape room as you are trying to find the missing puzzle. That's called the plot. That's called a what? The plot. The storyteller is able to weave in different plots within the story that he has given you. And I want to invite you, as you are listening to this sermon, to just ponder this sermon series, sermon title with me, The Plot Twister. Everybody shout it out for me. The Plot Twister. The plot twister is interesting because I'm about to show you what the plot twister does. If you haven't known it, a plot twist is an unexpected occurrence or turn of events in the story that completely changes the direction or outcome of the plot from the direction it was likely to go. In our story today is nothing short than a plot twist. Simply because the plot twister showed up. Today we will be reading from Mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 20. Take out your Bibles or your iPad or Android or Apple device. Whatever you have today, just take that out as we ponder Mark chapter 5. Last week we dealt with Mark chapter 4. Now we are in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 20. The Bible says... Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. Notice what Mark just said. What Mark just said right here is simply, they made it. Previously, they thought they weren't going to make it. Do you remember that? They were in a storm, they were going through a storm, but Jesus, the great master, gave them a plot twist. When they thought that the story would end in them dying in a storm, they got a testimony that says, I am still here. It was dangerous, the storm was bad, but their testimony was, we are still here. It was a fearful experience, but we are still here. Is there anyone in here today who has a still here testimony because God gave you a plot twist? Many of people thought that you would not have made it, but God intervened and gave you a plot twist. Many people thought that you would not make it out of surgery, but Jesus intervened and gave you a plot twist. God is able to intervene within your story and rewrite the narrative. That, that, that's a plot twist. The disciples experienced in their early, early developments as they were walking with Jesus, the, the, the person who is able to twist and turn their story. The Bible continues to read like this, starting from verse 2. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit 
who had his dwelling among the tombs. They just came out of the storm. Now here they are meeting a man who has an unclean spirit living in the tombs. And the Bible says, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, underline those two words, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him, and always night and day he was there cutting himself with stones and crying. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud, loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? Yeah, what is your name? And he answered saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also he begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about, how many? How many? 2,000, about 2,000 pigs. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. Oh, my God. So those who fed the swine fled. And they told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus, hear this, and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the lesion sitting and closed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Notice that instead of them being happy for the man right here, they were afraid. <laughs> you will know who is really for you based on how they celebrate what God has done for you. <laughs> These people did not celebrate this man's breakthrough. And do you know some people like that when God blesses you? They don't celebrate you. They don't celebrate your blessing. They don't celebrate your upgrade. They don't celebrate your deliverance. They don't celebrate your anointing. You see, God blessed you with a healthy relationship, but they aren't happy for you. God blessed you with that house, but they aren't happy for you. God helped you to overcome an addiction, but they aren't happy for you. Why? Because they wish God did that for them. And what we need to do is to learn to celebrate the victories and the successes of others. They should have celebrated the fact that the man is in his right mind again. I said that you will know who is really for you based on how they celebrate when God blesses you. I'm just reading the text. Verse 16, and those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed. And about the swine, then they began to plead with him to depart from their region, leave, leave. And when he had got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends. And tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. And how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him. And all marveled. <laughs> what a story. This is a powerful story. If you remember, you will know that in Mark chapter 4, right before Jesus got to this man... There was a violent storm that arose. Everybody say violent. Violent. It is funny that the storm that arose 
It arose when Jesus was on his way to grant a breakthrough to this man who was in bondage. It is funny that it seems like when something good is about to happen to you, the enemy has a way of trying to bring disruption and interruption. When God gets ready to pull you out of a stronghold, there are always things that will pop up when God is getting ready to bless you. So here is my first point. Write this down. The enemy will try to do everything to block it when God gets ready to pull you out of a stronghold. Hmm. I said sometimes when God is on his way to give you your breakthrough, the enemy will try to do everything to block it. The Bible says, Jesus said to the disciples, let's go over to the other side. Why? Because Jesus saw a man in bondage and wanted to give him a breakthrough. But the enemy would not let Jesus come into his territory without a fight, so he sent a storm. The Bible says in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 37, on the same day when evening had come, he sent them, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose. Notice in the text that there were other little boats with Jesus in the storm. But there was no mention of them going through a storm. There was no mention about them, about what happened to them. There was no mention from the gospel writers who narrated the story that showed us that they were suffering in a storm. They did not mention about them, beat the, about the winds and the waves beating into their boats. No. Why? Because they did not pose a threat to the enemy's kingdom. The storm was not designed to stop the other little boat. Mm -mm. But the storm was designed to stop the boat that was carrying the man who had power. The storm was designed to stop the man who had power over the winds and power over the waves. It was designed to stop the one who had power to heal, power to transform, power to deliver, power to resurrect, power to grant a breakthrough. The storm was designed to block Jesus from delivering a man that the devil was taking advantage of. Mm. You see, the enemy knew that the man's breakthrough was coming. Sometimes when God is on his way to give you your breakthrough, the enemy will try everything to block it. But here is your shout. Whenever Jesus has made up his mind to grant you a breakthrough, there is nothing that the enemy can do about it to block it. They can try to block it by going to voodoo doctors, but that won't work. They can try to post scandal about you, but that won't work. They can try to comment negativity about you but that won't work they can try to use name dropping gossiping scandalizing judging criticizing but nothing they try will be able to work because when God gets ready to give you your breakthrough nothing can stop him from getting to you are you glad today that God is able to grant you a breakthrough and nothing can stop it my grandmother would say, who God bless, no man curse. In other words, no matter how hard the enemy tries to curse your blessing away, it won't work. Fred Hammond was right when he said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because God will do just what he said he will do. It won't work. So you can be at peace knowing that what God has for you is for you. You see, storms have to move when Jesus gets ready to bless you. 
Winds and waves have to move when Jesus gets ready to bless you. Strongholds have to bow when Jesus gets ready to bless you. It could be your ex, your enemy, your inconsiderate boss, your gossiping co-worker, your merciless landlord, your frustrating neighbor, your jealous cousin. I don't care who it is. When God gets ready to bless his children, there is nothing that the enemy can do hallelujah hallelujah but, but but watch this watch this write this down part number two people will try whenever God gets ready to pull you out of a stronghold people will try to label you based on what you are going through oh yeah oh yeah but but don't let what you're going through define who you are Look at the text. Mark chapter 5 verse 2 says, And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Notice in our passage that there is nowhere in the text where this man is labeled as the demoniac. I opened my text trying to look in Mark, trying to look all over the Bible to see where the text called this man the demoniac. But Mark did not call this man the demoniac. Mark did not let what the man was going through define who he was. Notice that Mark does not call this man what we have labeled him. We are the ones who have labeled this man the demoniac. But look what Mark said. Mark said in verse 2 that this is a man with an unclean spirit. Mark said first he is a man. Secondly, he is with an unclean spirit. His identity is that he is a man. But his story is that he is with an unclean spirit. Notice what Jesus did with this man as well. Not even Jesus labeled the man based on what he was going through. Jesus said in verse 8, come out of the man, unclean spirit. Jesus called him the man. Notice that Jesus did not say the demoniac. Jesus separated what this man was going through from who he was. Why? Because Jesus knows how to separate your identity from your story. Oh, child of God, I wish you would hear me today. Don't let what you are going through define who you are. You have gone through a divorce, but don't let the divorce make you label yourself as the divorcee or divorced. What you have been through is not who you are. That's just part of your experience. But your experience is not your identity. The divorce is part of your story, but your identity is that you are a child of God. The infidelity is part of your story, but your identity is that you are forgiven by God. The skin disease is part of your story, but your identity is that you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. The addiction is part of your story, but your identity is that God chose you, God called you. I said your identity is that you're appointed, you're anointed, you're consecrated, you're liberated, you're undefeated. I'm so glad that Jesus doesn't label us based upon what we have been through. Hallelujah. So, so don't let what you have been through or going through define who you are. Oh, some people will try their best to label you. Look at that, the prostitute. Look at that, the one that is in the club. Look at her, the one with the skin disease. Look at him, the one just, just got divorced. Look at this one, the other one, that one. And they try to label you based on what you're going through. But don't let the enemy play with your mind because God doesn't see you based on what you are going through. Somebody said it best that when we see somebody who is even a prostitute, they are a daughter of God practicing prostitution. Oh, you'll get it when you get home. But watch this. When God gets ready to pull you out of a stronghold, watch this, state number three, point number three, he will not use external methods to break your internal chains. Yeah, when he gets ready to pull you out, he is not going to use the external methods 
to break your internal chains. Why? Because internal chains cannot be broken by using external methods. When Jesus was about to deliver the man with the unclean spirit, notice that he did not bring chains with him. He spoke to what was inside of him. But the community tried to do the opposite. They tried to help the man by bringing chains. Say, I'm going to help him today. And how I'm going to help this man? I'm going to bring chains and shackles. Look at Mark chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. The Bible says that when Jesus got to the man, the Bible says that this man had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and what? Chains. And the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. Oh, God. This means that the community tried to help him by using external methods. They used chains to try to help him. They used shackles as a newborn to try to help him. They tried to tame him. They would say, hush, bro, hush, hush. I am right here, big bro. I'm right here. I'm right here to help you. Come on, man. The chains are going to help you. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Okay? Just, just, just hush, brother. You're screaming too loud. Come on. Calm down. Let me just help you right now. I have some chains. I bought them from Lowe's. And they are designed to help you. The shackles are designed to calm you because you're out of your mind. So we have decided as a committee in our board meeting that the way how we are going to help you is by chaining you up. So hold on. This chain around your neck, this chain around your feet, this chain right here, don't worry. We are going to help you. And they try to help the man by chaining him. But the Bible says, Quinton, that every time they chained him up, he broke it. He broke the chain and he took it off. Throw it down to the ground. He broke them and nothing they tried could tame him. Because what? The chains were an external method. They were external. The shackles were an external method. And taming him was an external method. And the crazy thing about this is that they used to, what they used to help this man is that the methods that they used to help this man weren't designed to heal him. They were just designed to restrict him. They just wanted to put a restriction on the man. Watch this. Some people... Some people will try to help you by creating more chains for you. <laughs> but their methods have been hurting you instead of healing you. You see, they are trying to use an external method to try to break your internal chain. You are already chained internally, but their way of helping you is trying to help you on the external. This man was chained internally, and putting on external chains were not going to help him. It was only going to restrict him. Why? Because sometimes when you try to use external things to break internal chains, instead of it actually healing you, it will hurt you. It will hurt you. Watch this. Because in our text, we realize that the more they chained the man, the worse it got. To the point where he started to cut himself. These chains, these people are trying to help me, but it's not working. And this, this culture that we're living in is a culture where people just want to restrict your behavior. That's all. They just want you to have a behavior modification. They don't really care about heart transformation. So what will happen in, in some people trying to help you? Some of them have good intentions. But what they will do is these people will try 
to put chains on you. The first thing, some of you are going through some things and you have been trying to break it for a while, but it just won't work. You have tried so many different things, but it just won't work. And what some people will do is see you're struggling with pornography, and when you struggle with pornography, they will try to put a password on your device. You can say, yeah, let's put a password on this device because my, my son right now is going through... He's going through something, and I got to take the phone away and put a password. And they try to chain you up by using a what? Just a password. But the thing is, what they don't understand is that a password, putting on a password is just a restriction. It's just designed to restrict you. It's not designed to heal you. You have something going on internally. And putting chains all around you to try their best to try to restrict you ain't going to really help you the real way. And so they put a password on your devices. But the thing is, when you have an internal chain, you will find another device to watch whatever you were watching on on that device that they restricted. You will try to find your computer. You will try to go to a library. You will try to watch it in your car. You will go on another person's internet to try to find it. Why? Because when you are addicted, when you are chained from the inside by a stronghold, external methods will not be able to break internal chains. And so you find something else and you just break it. You just say, man, nope, I'm going to find another way. Let me loose these chains, and I'm going to find another way. Matter of fact, I could just leave that, but as long as I'm free to go around, I'll find another way to watch pornography, and you are saying that I'll find another way to try to get whatever I'm dealing with inside fed. External chains, no matter how you chain up somebody with restrictions, they are not going to change by the chains. Some people... When they are addicted, having a stronghold on the inside, what will happen is you will try to say, I'm going to help this person right now. They just came to church and they want to give their life to Christ. But what I'm going to do with this person, I'm going to go by their house and I'm going to put a chain on them by taking out all the alcohol in their refrigerator. And you go to their house and you try to chain the person up by cleaning out all the alcohol in the refrigerator. But you put, you take out all the alcohol. But the thing is, the person like, yeah, I'm not going to drink again. Don't worry, I'm not going to drink. I promise you, I won't drink again. You help me, thank you. But you just put a restriction. But now you find the person at parties. Now you find the person at different places drinking because they can't get it at home but they can get it when they're with the boys. They can get it when they're hanging out with the girls. They can get it at their friend's house. They can get it at the club. They can get it elsewhere because external chains will not be able to break internal chains. You just restrict them, but what you did in your restriction was actually propel them to hurt themselves even more. When they used to drink one time, now they feel like, I need to drink three times. When they feel like I just need to get three sip, they feel like they need to get 15 sip. Because you trying to help them with external methods are just strengthening their internal chains. This is what happened to the demoniac. People from the community were trying to help him by using external chains. Some people... You try to chain by saying that, you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to help you because it seems like you have a, a problem with gluttony. The belly is getting too big and there's a hangover. And what I'm going to do for you is buy you a Planet Fitness membership. And you buy that person a Planet Fitness membership for the year and they go to Planet Fitness to try to cut down their addiction to gluttony but the thing is, as soon as they leave Planet Fitness, they are found at Pizza Hut. 
They're at Pizza Hut saying, I need double cheese. I need all the toppings. Put some pepperoni on it. Put some chicken, so, some chicken, some sausage. Put everything. And they lost one pound at Planet Fitness. But at Pizza Hut, they put on two. I want to let you know that external change won't break internal change. They need something more than that. And if you have some internal change today, I want to let you know that you are not forsaken. That God sees you. No matter what you're going through, Jesus sees that you need help and help is on the way. Some people have been helping you, but the real master, the plot twister, is on his way to break your chains because Jesus will cross a storm to get to you. Jesus will light up shadows to get to you. Jesus will climb up mountains to get to you he will kick down walls to get to you because you are not forsaken and you are never alone Jesus is on his way to help your internal change hallelujah so whatever you are going through today I want to let you know that Jesus is planning a plot twist this man's story should have ended man the man killed himself after demons got a hold of him, he should have maybe killed himself. Maybe should have committed suicide. After he has gone through it, he maybe is thinking, what is life? Why should I live? Why should I breathe? But boy, oh, child of God, if you are like this man, I want to let you know, hold on. Don't you give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't commit suicide. Don't let go. Don't give up now. Help is on the way because God is about to give you a plot twist. Jesus knows how to change the trajectory of your story he knows how to rewrite your destination he knows how to recalculate the path that you're on he's planning a plot twist for you yeah. hallelujah hallelujah so 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 Jesus came to this man not a demoniac he came to this man and when he came the Bible tells us that he immediately ran to meet Jesus. It's funny as I'm here, it's not in the text, but not in my, in my notes, but it's funny as I'm thinking about it, is that he is demon possessed, but somehow a glimpse of Jesus gave him the strength to run to Jesus. No matter how much, how many demons were in this man. A legion, basically, when I do the research, a legion in a Roman, in a Roman army, a legion of soldiers were equivalent to four to 6,000 soldiers. So this man having a legion of demons was about four to 6,000 demons in this man. But a glimpse of Jesus help this man to run to Jesus. Oh God, I don't know how strong the enemy has gotten you in whatever you are at, but if you could just get a glimpse of Jesus right now, he will give you the strength to run to your breakthrough. He will give you the strength to run to your healing. He will give you the strength to run to your freedom. He will give you the strength to run to your deliverance. Just a glimpse. Oh, Paul just said, by beholding him, I become changed. When you behold Jesus, there is transforming power that is available to transform whatever you are going through. Just behold him. Just one glimpse and things can change. You have to understand something about demonology. Okay, demonology. Jesus gives us some insight when it comes on to a person being possessed by a demon. I was in India, and maybe demon possession here, like in, in, in the Western world here, might not be as strong as it is in countries like Asia and some other parts in Africa. But when I went to India, it was all over the place. People would walk up as I'm preaching, demon possessed. Flow foaming on the ground, screaming out all different type of things. So demon possession is real. Okay, it is real. And Jesus gives us an insight about demon possession. Now, demon possession doesn't mean that, oh, because I have an alcohol addiction, that's a demon. <laughs> okay, we have labeled things and say that that's a demon. 
that's a demon. As soon as you have a stronghold, you're smoking some cigar, you're smoking some marijuana, or as soon as you start to have some stronghold, it's, yeah, that demon got a hold of you. That's not really true, okay? But also, it's not for you to go far left to say that, man, I'm possessed, but just give me some medication. Okay? There's a balance here. Look how Jesus teaches this. Because this man was possessed to the point where this is the strongest demonic possession we see in the Bible. Okay? We have other stories of people being possessed. But this text right here, this story, is a story that we haven't seen throughout the Bible when it comes on to demon possession. Jesus taught on this. He said in Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 to 45, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, but finds none. Then what it does, it says, oh, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself. Don't miss it. How many? Only seven. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. Now, based on this context about demon possession, notice that the man did not get into this horrible state overnight. Okay, I want you, I want you to come, come closer, come closer in the text with me. This man grew into his bondage. Gradually, his demonic possession got stronger. His stronghold got stronger and stronger. Based on this information about demonic possession, you can see that he was delivered over and over again. But every time he was delivered, his stronghold got worse. There is nothing worse than a mother seeing a son going through a stronghold. This text touches my heart. Because I put myself in the shoes of the mother of the son. Put it on, please. Put it on. Because what you see here in this text is a man that is possessed with, home, with about how many demons? Four to six thousand. Jesus said, when an unclean spirit leaves, how, he comes back with how many? Seven. Seven. This man had four, at least 4,000. Do you know the heartbreak a mother had to see to watch her son being possessed over and over and over? Because one unclean spirit came. They prayed for him. I could watch the mother praying all night. Oh, I need some help. Now, Decapolis, the scholars say that Decapolis was a Gentile nation, which meant that Gentiles worship idols, okay? Gentiles worship idols in the day, so I don't know what the names of the God were in Decapolis, but I could see a mother calling up upon a God, just trying to see some help. Can I get some help for my boy? Can I get some help for my son? I don't like to hear him screaming like that. I don't like to see him going through the pain. I could see him in room saying, Mommy, I don't know what's going on. I can't sleep, Mommy. I don't know. I just feel weird. I don't know something. I'm, I'm not thinking straight. And they prayed for him. They anointed him. They called the church to pray for him. He got delivered. But when he got delivered, the unclean spirit left. When it left, it went back to try to find an aboding place but did not find down. It came back to this man. He saw that nothing, it was still empty. His heart was not attached to Christ. He was still worshiping Gentile gods. He was still worshiping idols. So the unclean spirit said, you know what I'm going to do? Hold on. They casted me out one time, but I'm going to go for seven more demons and I'm going to go for a stronger demon. And they came, eight of them came to come inside of this man. Well, the demon possession took over this man 
and they went after they prayed again. They said, we prayed before and it worked. Call 10 elders this time. Get the anointing. Picture the mother. The mother stayed up all night. The mother fasted all week. The mother prayed. I say that, God, I won't let you go until you bless my son. The eight demons came out, but the eight demons came out and the boy was still empty. They all the demons say, oh, the boy is still empty. Let's go for seven other demons. When they got seven other demons, 15 demons came more to this boy and possessed him. And he's just repeating over and over and over and over until he had legions of demons within him. Can you imagine the heartbreak a mother has to go through as she prays, as she fasts, as she calls upon all the gods there are, but every time they delivered him, more demons came back. She has to suffer that loss every time. She has to go through the pain every time. And I can imagine the community saying, Mother, look at you. Your prayer won't work. Your prayer is not as powerful. God ain't hearing your prayer. But hear me out, mothers. Your child getting into bondage doesn't mean that you did not pray for your child. Sometimes the enemy might make you think that you could have prayed more or you could have done more for your child to be healthy, for your child to be out of prison. But guess what? His goal is to make you walk around as a mother dealing with guilt. But your child getting into bondage, getting into trouble, getting arrested, getting shot, getting their driver's license taken away, or getting into drugs doesn't mean that you did not pray. You have attended all night prayer meetings. You have attended anointing services. You have requested prayers from the elders. You have fasted and prayed for your children. You have done everything you could. But guess what, mothers? Your child's journey to bondage does not mean that you did not pray. At the end of the day, every child has a choice. <laughs> you can't fast your way for them to be into heaven. Your works cannot get them into heaven. Every child has a choice. You have done all you can. Now the songwriters say, stand. After you have done all you can, mother, stand. After you have done all you can, I say, stand. After you have done the prayer meeting, after you have done the fasting, after you have done the crying, after you have done the screaming, just stand. God, I've done it all, God. I've done it all. Just stand in the presence of God. Say, God is above me now. God is in your hands. It's beyond me now. I can't do more. I need you now. Just stand and be still and watch how God steps in. Be still and know that God is God. He has a plan for your child. He has a plan to get him out of prison. He has a plan to bring health. He has a plan to bring him back to church he has a plan to bring them back God has a plan just stand hallelujah 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 after you have done everything you can in your strength just stand and watch what God will do because he's a plot twister. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise if you know that God is in God's hand. You have parked it there. You have left it there. He said, God, it's in your hands. Hallelujah. 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 When God, watch this, when God allows your child to go down the path of bondage, in spite of your prayers, 
Don't think that God has forgotten your prayers. <laughs> Don't think that God has forgotten your child. No, no, no. You just keep praying because those same tears, God took them in a bottle. Those same tears that you shed on your weeping pillow, God took them in a bottle. Angels dispatched from glory, brought it up to heaven through the Holy Spirit, and God has translated that thing and knows exactly what your son needs. Watch this. Sometimes children will make up their minds to play with the devil. And no matter how much you pray, God will allow them to go through that path because the only way he can truly save them is to allow them to go down that journey. They say, oh, Mama, I see you. I know what you're saying, Mama. I got you. I've heard you, Mommy. I've heard you. But the boy is stubborn. I've heard you, mommy, but, but, but she, she's stubborn. I've heard your prayers, but, but just trust the plot twister that I'm going to let it go downhill, but the plot twister, it has a plan to turn it back around. Trust the plot twister to rewrite the story. He has a plan. He has a plan. Allow God to do his perfect work. Because when Jesus gets ready, who? To pull you out of a stronghold. Watch this, my last point. Here it is. He will change the narrative of your story. Only Jesus can change the narrative of your story. This is what I call a plot twist. <laughs> Mark chapter 5, verse 15 says, Then they came to Jesus. And saw the one who had been demon-possessed, Elder Walker, hear me, had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting, somebody got it, and what? Clothed and in his right mind. <laughs> Plot twist. Notice that the text says that he had been. Had been means that this is not what is. Had been means that he was demon possessed, but now he is not Didi. I love this because there is nothing but a plot twist. <laughs> Can a plot twist be so good? Plot, t plot twist is a good thing. Because only Jesus can change the narrative of your story. Only Jesus can make what is become what was. He can make your present story become your past reality. He can change the narrative of your story to now you have the testimony where now you had been bound. You had been addicted. You had been broken. You had been out of your mind. Hallelujah. You had been devalued you had been traumatized are you just glad that jesus can change your story to what is to now what was you had been lost but jesus found you you had been sick but jesus healed you you had been broken but jesus mended you i am so glad that jesus can change the narrative of your story when jesus changes the narrative of your story he not only gives you a new story but he gives you back what you had lost. Woo! I said he gives you back what you had lost. This is called restoration. What I see here in the text is Jesus offering this man restoration. This man had lost his mind. He had lost his clothes. He had lost his ability to sit and be still. He had lost his family. He had lost his speech. He had lost his free will. But the Bible says in verse 15 that he was sitting. Mm. He was what? Sitting. Which means that Jesus restored his ability to rest again. Can you imagine this man was not able to rest? The Bible says that he was walking up and down all night and all day. They put on chains on him. The chains were just falling down to the ground. But as the chains were just falling down, he was just could not be still. He was just walking around all night, all day. The Bible said he was screaming. Aah! 
screaming all night and all day. The people in the communities could hear his sound all night. He is cutting himself all day. He's cutting himself and screaming. He needs help because something is going on. But when the plot twister came, the plot twister was able to make him now move from not being able to be still to sitting. This is what I call restoration. But the text says that he was also closed, which, which means that Jesus restored his purity. This is called restoration. The text says he was in his right mind, which means that Jesus restored his peace of mind. That's called restoration. Because Jesus offered this man restoration he did not look what, like what he had been through. When the community came and saw the man sitting, closed in his right mind, they could not recognize that this is actually the same man that was up here in the mountain screaming out in the tomb. Now, one other gospel writer said that this man was naked. Which, which Mark is wanting us to recognize this, that he's now closed. So a miracle took place. Jesus did not bring any clothes with him. Miraculously, God was able to put clothes on this man. <laughs> Jesus will restore your purity when you come to him. I don't care what relationships you have been through. I don't care how many people you slept with. When Jesus, when you come to Jesus, he is able to give you revirgination of mind. He is able to transform you, to make you new again and pure again in his sight. Jesus offered him restoration. Let me illustrate it like this because this man did not look like what he had been through. Last year... After, after I preach the Discovering Life Transforming series, after that, after that series, somebody ran right into my back, the back of my, my car. As they ran into my car, I came out, I looked at the back, I said, man, this man messed up my whole car. How in the world am I going to get back this car to look as good as it was? Well, the insurance company said, you know what you can do? Bring it to the collision, this collision company. They will take care of you. Don't worry. They'll take care of you. I was a little skeptical. Maybe it's going to come back lean a little bit. Maybe it's going to come back hanging down a little bit. Maybe I don't even recognize it. Maybe I'll notice that this thing is not fixed. But when I gave it to the collision company, and when they did their work, and they did their thing, and they finished the work, when they finished the work on the car, I want to let you know that my family members could not even tell that the car was in an accident because it did not look like what it had been through. My church members here could not tell that that car was in an accident because it did not look like what it had been through. I am here to tell somebody that when Jesus is finished with you, you will not look like what you have been through because he is going to restore your mind, restore your joy, restore your peace. Is anyone just glad that Jesus does not make you look like what you have been through? Because of Jesus, you don't look like what you have been through. Because of Jesus, they can't tell you have been through 16 searches because of Jesus you don't look like what you have been through you have been through hell and back but because of Jesus you don't look like what you have been through you don't look like that you have been through a divorce you don't look like you have been through a car wreck does anyone just want to cl clap their hands and praise God by saying thank you Jesus for restoration thank you Jesus for your sanity thank you Jesus for restoring my joy thank you Jesus for restoring my dad Thank you, Jesus, for restoring my peace. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring my mind. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring my joy. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for breaking my chains. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for breaking my chains. I don't look like what I have been through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, this is what Jesus will do for you. He can give you restoration. 
No matter what you're going through today, no matter what the enemy threw at you, Jesus is able, the plot twister, to rewrite your story and change whatever path the enemy had you on. You see, everybody has a story. Everybody has a story. Mark chapter 4, verses 19 to 20 says, After Jesus restored this man, he's now in his right mind. He's now close. He's now sitting. The Bible says that Jesus said, Go home. Tell your friends. <laughs> Tell somebody how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and everyone marveled. Remember, this is a Gentile city. Jesus told this man, go tell what the Lord has done. But the Bible says he went to Decapolis and told how much Jesus. Now Mark right here is doing something interesting because Mark is revealing the identity of Jesus. Remember from last week? He's revealing the identity of Jesus Christ. And so the one who is Lord, Mark says a man went out and did not talk about all oh, the Lord. He talked about Jesus. Which means that Jesus, the same one who is Jesus, is the same one who is Lord. This Yahweh God is the same God from the Old Testament. That Mark wants his readers to recognize that Jesus, the Messiah, is here. Mark wants you to know that Jesus is the living word. And notice that when he went home to tell them, they marveled. They believed that the Jewish God was only for Jewish people. But here comes a Gentile boy who was chained, who was in bondage. Here comes home a Gentile boy coming home to say, Mommy, let me tell you somebody about a man by the name of Jesus because he gave me the best stories. Mommy, the best stories are made from the messiest moments. And when I ask Google about what a plot twist is, they let me know that this story fits well with the demoniac because Google said a plot twist, a plot twist is when a re person reveals a major twist halfway through a story that was heading downhill. A story that was heading in the wrong direction. And here comes a turn. This man had a story to tell his mother. Mommy, Jesus gave me a plot twist. Everything about the man makes his story even more beautiful. His chains were supposed to be taken for granted. His nakedness was not supposed to be taken for granted. Everything he went through was not supposed to be taken for granted because it made his story beautiful. Everything you have been through should not be taken for granted. All the pain, all the tears, all the disappointments, all the setbacks, all the screaming, all the crying, all the headache, all your questions, all your loss, all the things you have been through were not to be taken for granted because God wants to use your messy story to write his best story. Hallelujah. Because God can use your messiest moments and write you or give you a mission. He said, go. The man did not know the 28 fundamental beliefs. The man did not know from Genesis to Revelation, he was a Gentile. The man did not know all the doctrines of the Bible. The man did not know Revelation chapter 13, dealing with the mark of the beast, and Revelation chapter 14. This man did not know everything about the Bible. He did not know the sanctuary message. He did not know all of these connecting lines from Daniel and Revelation. But this one thing this man know, the plot twister changed my story. The plot twister rewrote my narrative. The plot twister gave me another chance. How? Woo. 
What is your story? You might not know everything in the Bible, but you know one thing that Jesus did for you. What is it? Write it down. Proclaim it. Testify about Jesus. I could imagine as I close that as this man walked around telling his story, whoo, <laughs> as he walked around in Decapolis telling his cousins, telling the ones who chained him up, telling the ones who prayed for him, telling the ones in the community who thought he was just going to die in the tomb, telling the ones who gave up on him. I could just hear him saying the story, and this might be your story as well. The story he told was, I was chained, but now I'm chosen. I was broken, but now I am bought. I am part of the royal family of God. I have been adopted by the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. I am a partaker of the divine nature. I am no longer a slave to sin, but a slave to Christ. I am mortal now, but one day will put on immortality. I am corrupted now, but one day will put on incorruption. I am justified sanctified and one day will be glorified I'm untouchable unshakable unstoppable redeemed cared for loved restored not forsaken never alone called appointed why the president of heaven delivered me the second person of the Godhead restored me the judge of the universe transformed me the creator of the world made a way for me I'm so glad that we have a story to tell I was lost but Jesus found me I was chained, but he chose me. I was out of my mind, but God gave me a new mind. I was bound, but now I am free. Hallelujah. 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 Is anybody glad that Jesus gave you a new story to tell? Hallelujah. Stand to your feet if you believe this word. If you believe that Jesus can change the narrative of your story. He's a plot twister. I don't care what you're going through today. He's able to turn it around. So today Jesus offers you all the restoration you need. Everything that the devil took from you. I believe that God, when you come to Jesus, He's going to give it back. Restoration is what Jesus offers for you. Redemption is what Jesus offers for you. He does not leave you the way you found Him. He has a way of being the potter who is able to turn the clay beautiful thing that I love about this man is that in verse the Bible says in Mark chapter 5 verse 18 that when Jesus delivered this man the man begged Jesus and said God, Lord Jesus may I be with you may I be with you this is one of the most powerful points in this passage that after all the man did, after all Jesus did for the man, the man now had a burning desire to be with Jesus. He said, God, I want to be with you. What Jesus is saying to you today is look at all the good things he has done for you. Look at all the ways he has made for you. Look at all the rivers he has parted. Look at all the times he provided for you. Look at all the times he answered your prayer. Look at all the times he blessed you. They were designed for you to have a desire to be with God. And Jesus is saying that today is a day where he wants that desire to be resurrected. He wants that desire to be there because that was a sign that the demons could not come back in this man. What the demons would have found empty has now been replaced 
with a desire for more of Jesus. Just as Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Paul got caught up in knowing Jesus, wanting to be with Jesus. And God is saying, I want to fill your heart with a desire for more of me. If this is you today, you want more of Jesus. You want to say, Jesus, you have done so much for me. You have broken my chains. You have, you have freed me. You have delivered me. And today, I just want to be with you. Just raise your hand. You want to be with Jesus. You, have, you want this desire to just be with Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You're here today and you're here by divine assignment and appointment. Because God led you here. And what God is saying that if you want your chains to be broken. You have been praying. There is a mother here. You have been praying. You have been fasting for God to make a way. And God is saying that external methods will not break your internal chains. But today you want to give it to the master. You want to give it to the plot twister. Raise your hand. You want to give your child to the plot twister. You want to give your life to the plot twister. Raise your hand. You want him to rewrite that story. You want him to break your internal chains. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Today you're here. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. As I pray for you, there's somebody here. You might want to give your life to Christ today. You want to say, Jesus, I want to go all the way. I've been dealing with my chains. I've tried so many things to break it. People have prayed for me. And God, I want to come to you. Because you are the one who's a plot twister. If you want Jesus to do something in your life, you want to give him your heart, you want to give him your life, you want to be baptized one day, come on, raise your hand. It's the best to say hallelujah, hallelujah, hey, hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody else is here, you want to give your life to Jesus, to the plot twister. You're here today. You want to give your life to Jesus. There are, there are two people right here saying, yes, I want to be baptized. I want to be born again. I want to give my life to Jesus. Where are you today? You want to give your life to him. It's the best day. Raise your hand. Where are you? You came here on divine appointment. Where are you? Just raise your hand. The best thing is to give your life to Jesus. Where are you today? You came here on divine appointment. Let the plot twister rewrite the narrative. We're, just raise your hand. I'm here for you. We are here as a church for you. Just wave it. I believe somebody else is here. Just wave a hand. Just wave. Just, just, just wave it a little bit. You don't even have to lift it up high. Just wave it. I see you. Where are you today? You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to be born again. You want to be baptized. You want to say, Jesus, you have done so much for me. Here I am. I want to be with you. Just wave your hand. Just wave it. Don't look to your neighbor. Don't look left. Don't look right. Just wave your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Online text Jesus to that number 252 408 4447. Text Jesus to that number. We will get in touch with you and we will pray with you. Is there somebody else? You are here today. God sent you here. God convicted your heart. God spoke to you to say yes. Give your life to me. I love you. I died for you. I rose for you. I chose you. I broke your chains. Where are you today? Just raise it. Come on church. Pray right now. Pray right now. Pray. Where are you today? You want to say, Jesus, here I am. Here I am, Lord. He, he's calling you. He's saying, this is the time to rewrite your story. This is the time to change your narrative. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where are you today? Just wave the hand. You can't break your chain. Come on, Darrell, sing something for me real quick. Just sing something silently in the back. Where are you today? God sent you here for a reason. I want to pray for you specifically. I believe that what you're going through is going to take a God move. What you're going through today is going to take a miracle. Jesus is saying, just come to me. I've given you the strength, Jesus said, to run to me. Just wave it. 
just wait. Where are you? He's calling you. And he's saying that here I am. His love is saturating your heart right now. So sing something, Daryl. Sing something from the book. There is power. There is power. There is power there in the is name power. of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We believe it. Sing this song with us. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hey. There is power, there is power. In, the in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain, Hallelujah. break every chain. Come on, if you want a chain to be broken, there is power the come. Come. in the name of Jesus. Come, come. If you want your chains to be broken, just come. Just there come. is just power come right if you want God to make a move in the name your life, just come. Jesus. If you want Jesus to break that chain, just come. There is power if you want Jesus to do something in, in your life supernaturally, just come. Come. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. You have an internal chain. You have an internal chain that you want Jesus to break up. In the Come. name of Jesus, Hallelujah. there is Hallelujah. power Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. This is your season Jesus. of breaking. This is your moment to experience break every your chain. chains. Break every Fall chain. Down break to the every ground. This is your chain. season of a break. Break every chain. This is your season break every chain. of your internal break chains falling chain. down to the ground. This is your season. There is power. Hey. In the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. I want to go all the way with you. Just raise your hand. There is Come power. Come on, you want to go all the way? Where are you? In the name of you Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You want to say yes, Jesus? You there is the power. Jesus you want to say Jesus? Here I am today. Here I am. Hallelujah. 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 There is power. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To break every chain. Break yeah, every there are chain. Teams going around break right every now. Cards. chain. Just raise your hand, take one of the connect cards. Break fill every out chain. One of the cards today. Break no every chain. Break out every the chain. Because Jesus is about to there is power in, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me as I pray. Let us believe in faith that Jesus is about to break ever that you're going through internally. Jesus, today we come with all of our chains. Chains that we put on ourselves. Chains that friends and families and cousins put on us, but they're not working. They're hurting us instead of healing us. Today, oh God, we, we offer you our chains. We give you our chains today. And today we ask you, God, to break every chain. Oh God, you're, you're the plot twister. Change our story. Give us a new chapter. Turn the page of our book. Lord, I pray for everyone who walked up here. Break the chains that they're going through. Oh God, I pray whatever could not be broken in the last 10 years. Break it today, oh Jesus. 
whatever God they were holding on to a God that could not be broken whatever stronghold break it today Jesus you're the lion of the tribe of Judah nothing is too hard for you break every shame today. Lord we thank you for those who said yes to you yes I want to be baptized may you seal the decision may you transform them may you help them to embrace your love <laughs> May you grow us together in you. And all those who are online who are giving their lives to you right now across the world, seal that decision in Jesus' name. Let everyone who believes this word say amen.